Here is the Monlicker 88-90 I bought from RTI. I have a previous video on cleaning the bore, but I wasn't really happy with the results. To recap, the last 12 inches or so of the barrel doesn't have any rifling left. And there was deep pitting as well, but that was mostly in the last 3 to 4 inches. Here's what it looks like. Now I'm concerned that this could be dangerous to shoot, like if the rough bore snagged a bullet, or maybe part of one, leading to a bore obstruction. Accuracy I could care less about, but I would like to shoot this rifle and be confident that all of the bullet is leaving the barrel. I said before that this could be improved with a counterbore, but I'm not sure how I would go about counterboring past the deep pitting, or what type of reamer I would use, never mind the fact that my lathe isn't big enough to fit the barrel in. I decided to try honing the end of the barrel smooth. Here is a quarter inch rod. I'll cut a slit down the middle with the hacksaw. Just over an inch long. And deburr the sharp edges. I'm going to use this 180 grit sandpaper. I'll cut off a strip, fold the end of it and fit it into the slot. Then I'll wrap it around the rod. It's tough to tell how long of a piece of sandpaper to use. I'll just cut it off here and see how that works. Here's what it looks like. And I want it to be a tight fit to make sure it's smoothing out the rust, but not too tight where it has a lot of resistance. I'll put it up to the barrel, and it's a little bit too tight of a fit, so I'll cut off a piece. And then I'll attach the drill. Spin it slowly while also feeding it in. Before I go any deeper, it's probably a good idea to mark the 3 to 4 inches that I want to go. And then I'll just add a drop of oil to help it cut. And with the way the sandpaper is wrapped around the rod, it holds itself tight so it won't spin. Just make sure not to turn it in reverse and then it will unravel. The sandpaper clogs up fast, so frequent swapping with a new piece is needed. To swap it, it just slides off, and I can use the old piece as a template to know how to cut the new piece. You can see here the material that it's removing. These are from the high spots, or the area most likely to come in contact with a bullet. Since the pitted surface is so uneven, these come off quick. From here it's slower going to remove more material, but that's good. I found that the sandpaper I was using was very stiff. I want something that'll better conform to the bore, so I switched to this here, which has a more flexible backing. This worked better, it's easier to get inside the bore since it didn't want to unravel as much as I was trying to squeeze it down. You can see what the sandpaper looks like after just 30 or so seconds in the bore. It's a combination of wearing out and then clogging up as well. I'll stop and check my progress, but first I'll run a patch through. One thing I learned in the last video is that it's really hard to get a decent shot at just what I'm seeing. Holding the barrel up against my eye and pointing it to the ceiling light gives me a much clearer picture than I can show you all here. 
but you can get an idea. The first few inches are smooth, but I can see more pitting past that, so it looks like I need to go deeper. I'll mark off another two inches, and then one more inch past that too. And from there the process repeats starting with a fresh piece of sandpaper. Pushing the drill in I can feel more resistance in the area that I haven't worked yet. And that just shows that it's removing material little by little. You can hear the sound change as well. It gets higher pitched when it hits that spot. But after a few more passes with fresh pieces it goes away. Again, I'll clean it up with a patch before taking another look. And that's looking much better. It's becoming more of a smooth bore and less pits and valleys like it was before, almost like the surface of Mars. I think I do need to go just a bit deeper since you can see the transition area back to the roughness. I guess it went deeper than I thought, but no big deal, I can just mark off another two inches and go again. Again, the pitch changes as it's removing more material. Just checking in again. I don't see any areas of deep pitting, which means I reached the depth I needed to go to get rid of most of it. The smooth areas of the bore still seem a little rough, so now I'll try to polish it up a bit to see if I can get rid of those rings. This is a roll of 600 grit, which will be my final step. Hopefully that'll put a nice polish on the bore. I'm not sure how much it matters, but it couldn't hurt. I'll just cut up a few pieces and wrap them on. I'll feed it in, going until I hit my depth mark. I want to work the full length of the area at once, and not in steps like how I did with the rougher sandpaper, just so there's no uneven transitions. Checking one last time to see the results after the polishing. And I think that looks pretty good. Not completely smooth, but it's a vast improvement over what I started with. Again, I just want a bullet to have a safe point of exit from the rifle and not to be torn up by the rough pitting. One last thing I want to do is measure the bore at the end of the barrel. The bore diameter should be 0.329, so I'm hoping for something at least a few thousandths bigger. Here I have a small hole gauge. I'll put it in up to the knurling, which is about as far in as I can measure. I don't want to use zero safe since that could get snagged on the pitting that remains. And this method is good enough to just see how much bigger the bore is than it should be. I'll put some calipers to it. And here you can see how much that measures. More than enough for a bullet to safely pass through. And with that, the bore is done. I feel better now about shooting this rifle knowing that the last 9 inches of the barrel is essentially a smooth bore. So stay tuned, more to come with the rest of the rifle. Thanks for watching.